when you complete your Rajya Sabha term, we will be ready with 87 candles for you to blow out. Thank you and God bless. Yeah, I would request uh, Dr. Jordan Mitchell to come forward. Devuda, Devuda, uh, Professor Muchnan Dubey, okay. and friends, I am really honored to be on this panel today when this book, A Fistful of Dry Rice, is being released. Maro told me that uh, only a few minutes for me, so I have put down a few thoughts. <laughs> so I'll briefly say that. I got the book only yesterday. I could not read it page by page. But I spent time going through the insightful, <laughs> well-written 20 articles, introduction, and the wonderful interview Suhas had with the Devuda. I spent last night quite a lot of time just going through this book. What an inspiration it was for me. My hearty congratulations to KB, Manoranjan, and Sumit for taking all the efforts to produce such an extraordinary book to honor one of the most outstanding thinker, writer, activist of our times, and of course, a retired government son. Now, two issues I am concerned with when Devuda is here and this book is being released. That is land reforms and decentralization of power. I have known Devuda for over two decades. Little more. Little more. <laughs> I got more acquainted with you when you and Nirmal Mukherjee wrote this uh, wonderful report, New Horizons for West Bengal's Panchayat. It was really an inspirational guide for me when we were all working to strengthen the Panchayats. The report created a stir during that time as it not only brought out very clearly the strength and weakness of West Bengal's pioneering experiment with the decentralization, but also gave insightful suggestions on the reform measures that should be taken for ushering in a new horizon for West Bengal projects. Now, that was the time when 73rd Constitutional Amendment was passed. On 23rd December, December, so we are on the same time. And that was the signal, the first round of victory of a long struggle of many activists who said decentralization is very, very important for building India. Jay Prakash Narayan, SK Day, Ramakrishna Hegde, uh, Abdul Nasir Saab, they came to West Bengal to study and then they did whatever they can in uh, Karnataka. Those of who were parts of the movement for creating a legitimate space for village panchayats in the country's governance system were bubbling with enthusiasm with all these developments at that time. And this report at that time showed us the path we should follow in taking Panchayat Raj movement forward in this country. Even before I had known Devuda personally, I had heard his name in connection with the unique program which you mentioned, that is the land reform in West Bengal. And that was under the leadership of uh, Binoy Chaudhary. And uh, he was the minister at that time and you were with him. The particular program of land reform with which Debuda's name became familiar to us was Operation Barga, a program of quite radical tenancy reform for the benefit of the share corporates. 
As land reform commissioner to the government of West Bengal, Debuda had designed the policy and provided leadership to the ground level bureaucracy in executing the policy in literally lightning speed. That is what he did at that time. Later I heard from him, and it is also recorded in the interview uh, you had put it in this uh, book, that he was greatly inspired by a famous radical educationist, Paulo Freire, one of the world's leading educationists. He had a fundamental impact in the field of education and on the overall struggle for national development in third world countries at that time. According to Paulo Freire, ignorance and lethargy of the poor are the direct result of the whole situation of economic, social, and political domination. Devuda, you met him in Geneva, uh, and then you used to send the Darjeeling tea for him, for his uh, mother. And uh, I remember in 1980, I receiving Paulo Freire in Vishwa Kendra. I have published a small book, A Day with Paulo Freire. Pedagogy of the Oppressed. What a wonderful book he has written. And you had interaction with him, how to communicate <coughs> these uh, land reform issues from him, and he told you how to go about it. It is a wonderful write-up, which uh, uh, I could read yesterday. And I'm so happy that uh, uh, we have uh, inspiration from, from such wonderful, uh, great people here. Now, in the evaluation report of the West Bengal Panchayats, I read the line by line, I still read it as a Bible for me, because this is something fundamental about uh, decentralized governance. The most Im important thing you have mentioned is the land reform and uh, Panchayats. And why, after five years, of uh, all these uh, uh, reforms you did, why it is not being done in the same speed. And you found many mistakes in that as well. Now, there is a big problem. That is stated by Debuda in one of your very good books, you, uh, papers you have written, Rajiv Gandhi and the Third Tier of Governance. You remember that? Yeah, I vote for you. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In that concluding part of that article he wrote, I quote, it is another matter that things have not worked out in the way Raji wanted them even a decade after the 73rd Amendment in December 1992. There has been a discernible anti-panchayat lobby working in the political establishment of the center and state. I'm quoting you. So this anti-poor, anti-panchayat forces are sometimes, I feel, gathering strength even today. Even committed leaders like Nitish Kumar cannot overcome these strong forces. How else? Bihar could not even open the report on land reform submitted in 2008 by the commission appointed by the government under Devuda's chairmanship. It, 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 they did not even open that for several uh, months, or 15 months ago. And 15 months later, the government appointed a committee to study Devuda's recommendations. This was the best way, as Sumit wrote in mainstream, <coughs> I quote, to mutilate and murder the commission's report. So this is the forces which are working. And it is a great thing that after retirement, Debuda refused to be confined to a reclusive life. He writes profusely, participates in academic seminars, workshops, conferences, <laughs> and also in the meetings of the activists. He looks up, he takes up these issues which were dear to his heart. And that is where we get inspiration. 
at our institute, which has been working in these areas, we get great inspiration from you, dear Buddha. And uh, all these ideas are great for our future work. And uh, we had a big uh, event in uh, West Bengal three years back, three decades of panchayats in uh, West Bengal. And he was one of the main speakers. But he was very angry with the developments of these days. After speaking, he left the Mickey Hall, and everybody was looking why the Buddha is leaving, and then everybody knew why he was uh, leaving. You know it. And, <laughs> <laughs> so, we want to carry forward your task. On the occasion of the publication of this volume in your corner, I congratulate you for the wonderful work you have been doing and pray that uh, you may continue in many more years to do this great work you are doing. Thank you very much. Well, we now move, next move to uh, some of the authors to the volume, uh, saying a few words uh, about uh, their contribution about the Buddha. Uh, since you have already contributed to the volume, may I request you to confine your intervention to three to four minutes. We so have to finish the proceedings by about eight o'clock. So, Swahas. Uh, thank you, Moshuji. Uh, I'll be very brief. I think I'm thankful to the chair that has increased the three minutes to four minutes now. <laughs> uh, 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 I came uh, uh, close to Debuda about five years back, <coughs> and what touched me was uh, his uh, integrity, his uh, humility, and uh, his out-of-box thinking, and of course, his affection. Uh, the title of the book is uh, uh, from, a, from a phrase, from a, from a few words which reoccur in the interview, which I had the privilege of doing. And uh, that uh, it relates to his, uh, uh, this, uh, to uh, inspirational figure in his life, and that's uh, his father, Professor D. N. Banerjee. Um, uh, in fact, in the interview, if I would quote De Buddha, he goes to the extent of saying that my feelings for the underdog are due to my father, because he was an underdog in economic terms. Uh, the, the story is, and which is, uh, of course, a true story, uh, is that his father used to walk to school, and the only school nearby was about six kilometers away from the village Gorai. So poor was the family that his mother, that is Debuda's grandmother, used to give him, that's Debuda's father, at best a fistful of dry rice for munching on the way to school and back. A fistful of dry rice cannot be eaten raw. One must dip it in water and soak it so that it becomes slightly softer. He used to dip the rice in a pond nearby on the way up and way down. So that's the, the title for you, A Fistful of Dry Rice. What struck me during that interview, which uh, was done uh, in six clips over two months, and lasted totally for two hours and 28 minutes, was that Devuda came out like a true servant of the people. And the ideas of service to the poor, the marginalized, the Dalit and the Adivasis, the idea of service which was at the very core of our freedom struggle, and which to me, can be exemplified in the image of Gandhi on the eve of independence in August 1947 in Kolkata, away from the glitter and the pomp and the, uh, the transfer of power was taking place in Delhi, trying to bring succor to the right afflicted. I just want to leave you with a, with a few thoughts, and that I think these thoughts also are reflected in Debuda's thinking. Can we simply rethink of a model of development <clears throat> where the voiceless are never driven to the wall? Can the marginalized and the poor 
be given access to basic sources of jal, jungle as mean to sustain their livelihood, can we have an economic system that, as our constitution says, does not result in concentration of wealth and means of production to the common detriment? Can we overcome the mind-boggling disparities in income, education, health, and housing? This is a moment of truth which is facing us today. Moments of truth do not come easily by. Our tryst with destiny, to use Nehru words, can go on and on. But let us grab this moment of truth so that we can redeem our pledge, which has remained unredeemed for more than six decades, to make conditions for the last man and woman, representing are marginalized, the poor, the Adivasis and the Dalits, to give unto themselves that is truly theirs. I salute you, Devuda, and wish you continued work in the service of the poor and the marginalized of this country. Thank you. Devuda or Savisatyu. मालूम नहीं हम कब एक साथ मिले थे लेकिन जो सबसे बड़ा काम हुआ था वो बॉन्डेड लेबर का हुआ जो बांदर नहीं है उनका लिखा हुआ नोट इसमें है और हम समझते हैं कि उसमें जो स्ट्रेटजी हम लोगों ने बनाई थी जिसमें कि देवुदा ने हम भूमिका अदा की थी उसमें एक पॉइंट ये रखा गया था क्योंकि वो सब चीजें भूल गए इसलिए मैं इसको कह रहा हूं कि भाई बॉन्डेड लेबर लेबर है उसका मालिक है जमीन तो ये रिलेशनशिप जो है वो जमीन और बॉन्डेड लेबर की एक रिलेशनशिप है और बॉन्डेड लेबर की और जो जमीन का मालिक है उसकी दूसरी रिलेशनशिप तो इसलिए ये सोच कि बॉन्डेड लेबर लिबरेट हो गया तो उसको लिबरेट करने के लिए अब कुछ पैसे की जरूरत है रिहेबिलिटेशन की जरूरत है ये कॉन्सेप्ट हम लोगों ने उन्नीस सौ चौहत्तर पिछहत्तर में जिस समय हमने ये किया इसको रिजेक्ट किया क्योंकि हमें जो रिलेशनशिप स्ट्राइक करनी है वो है बॉन्डेड लेबर और उसके मालिक के बीच की रिलेशनशिप खत्म करनी है न कि उसको वहां से हटा करके और दूसरी जगह ले जाओ तो वहां पर जाकर के फिर वो बॉन्डेड हो जाता है और दिस ट्रिमेंडस रिजल्ट्स थ्रू ऑफ दी कंट्री बहुत लंबी कहानी है उसकी एक प्रस्ताव आया कि रिहेबिलिटेशन का प्रस्ताव आया तो हम चार लोग उसमें इन्वॉल्व थे शंकरन युगान्धर देवुदा और मैं ये चार की ग्रुप था विशाल तो उसमें सामने सवाल यही है कि रिलेशनशिप गलत कौन सी है यू मस्ट स्ट्राइक रिलेशनशिप विच इज रॉन्ग एंड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द वर्कर एंड द मास्टर इज रॉन्ग एंड देयर फॉर सी इन द लॉ सी मेड इवन दिस थिंग दैट यू सी इट विल बी पैनल ऑफेंस हैविंग पैनल ऑफेंस इनफैक्ट यू सी पीपल स्टार्ट टॉकिंग लाइक दैट Boldly that I have got twenty bonded labor. Let us see who comes and what can he do. We resisted this. In fact, when proposal came from the ministry about ten thousand rupees being given to um, all the bonded labor, uh, the bonded laborers who are liberated, uh, we wrote this thing that. पहली तो बात यही है कि ये उसको अपनी जमीन से उसको क्यों हटा करके दूसरी जगह आप उसको रिहेबिलिटेट कीजिए और दूसरा सवाल आपको याद होगा कि हमने कहा कि भाई ये तो बता दो कि वो तरीका बता दो जिससे कि दस हजार रुपए आप बॉन्डेड लेबर को देना चाहते हैं वो उस तक पहुंच जाए वो दस हजार रुपया जो है वो उस तक पहुंच ही नहीं सकता है उसमें जहां पर भी कार्यक्रम आप लेंगे वहां पर यही होगा कि ठाकुर साहब का जो नौकर है मजदूर है वो उस लाइन में नंबर एक पर खड़ा होगा 
उसको दस हजार रूपए मिल जाएंगे वो शाम को ठाकुर साहब को वो दस हजार रूपए दे देगा और पीठ में लात लगाएगा सौ रूपया देगा कहेगी बेटे खुश हो वो कहेगा कि साहब मैं बिल्कुल खुश हूँ सन उन्नीस के बाद क्योंकि तो तब तक हम जो है इसको रोके रहे सन उन्नीस के बाद आप देखेंगे कि तरह तरह के ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इकट्ठा शुरू होने स्थापित होना शुरू हो गए बॉन्डेड लेबर के मामले में तो बॉन्डेड लेबर के मामले में यही हुआ जो हम कह रहे थे जो डर था और सब जगह जो है वो इस प्रकार की बात नहीं हम समझते हैं कि उस समय की स्थिति में ये देवों का बहुत बड़ा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन था क्योंकि तो ये हमसे ही सबसे आगे ही थे तो हम लोग सब बात करते रहे फिर इसके बाद ऑपरेशन बरगा हम समझते हैं कि इससे बड़ा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन कहीं किसी का हो नहीं सकता हम वहां वेस्ट बंगाल वगैरह में भी गए तो जो बरगदार था उससे पूछा कि भाई इसकी मालिकी क्यों नहीं ले लेते वो कहने लगे कि हम मालिकी क्यों ले हम तो मालिक बने ही बैठे इसको जो जो जमींदार है उसको जितना चाहते हैं उतना दे देते हैं बात खत्म है क्योंकि उसमें जो है उसको निकाला तो जा ही नहीं सकता था तो वो एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण प्रोग्राम साबित हुआ लेकिन जो उसको थोड़े देरों के बाद रोका भी गया लेकिन तब तो भी उसकी डायनेमिक्स ऐसी थी कि आगे बढ़ता रहा पॉलिटिकल रेजिस्टेंस आ गया था एक स्टेज पर और उसकी उसके बावजूद उसको जो है वो किया गया मैं किताब नहीं पढ़ पाया हूँ लेकिन कुछ देवू ने जो इंटरव्यू में जो कुछ बातें लिखी हैं उनमें कुछ चीजें ध्यान आ रही कुछ चीजें इंटरेस्टिंग है ही सभी चीजें इंटरेस्टिंग है वैसे तो पहली चीज तो ये है कि जो कलेक्टिव फाइन की एक जगह पर जरूरत पड़ गई और किस तरह से लोगों को अपने कंफ्रेंटेशन से कलेक्टिव फाइन के माध्यम से उसको हटा दिया वो एक बड़ी अच्छी चीज हुई जिस प्रकार जिससे ये लगता है कि किस प्रकार से ही वॉज क्लोजर टू दीपुल एंड सी वॉज एबल टू ऑपरेशनलाइज सी देयर रिलेशनशिप इन दिस्टिंग सो कलेक्टिव कलेक्टिव फाइन की ऑपरेशन बरगा बॉन्डेड लेबर इत्यादि इत्यादि तमाम सब चीजों पर देवू का अमित हस्ताक्षर है और मैं उनको इसके लिए धन्यवाद देता हूँ शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ और अपनी बात I have had the privilege of knowing the Buddha probably longer than anybody in this room. That was on 24th of January, 1956. <laughs> they would have forgotten that. <laughs> But there is there the first paragraph of my essay that will refresh your memory how we met and how we got is the humanist in this person. Then later on, of course, I came to know. From time to time, from my very good friend who was also associated with you, Orun Shen, my batchmate, he worked with you. You are Harun uh, Harun Al Rashid, Vikramal, the type of forays <laughs> to find out the pulse of the people. I had official relationship with the Devu <coughs> when he took charge as Joint Secretary in charge of Shuddha Class and Bangalore Class as the Home Minister, 1978. And uh, I used to go to states, including West Bengal, where Devu was secretary in charge of social welfare. <coughs> so we had a lot of interaction with the Shurukas, backward class, etc. That was the time when I formally did a special conference with the Shurukas, and then getting it into the various states, which of course has now been reduced to a formality. Now we are trying to revive it by certain measures, which is which I hope will come through. But <clears throat> All have said. Uh, I am particularly moved by the fact that the beneficial operation Barga, 51 percent are Shuddha Khas and Shuddha Tribes, 44 percent Shuddha Khas and 7 percent Shuddha Tribes, and the rest are backward classes. Your Indo-Bihar also has a backward class bank. 
So this SC, ST, BC. Now one conclusion we are all coming to. We try to do it in our own ways. How to involve the people. But it becomes extremely important. That's from the way you are hopeful that if more and more Devudas and some other people could be there, you don't need that time is gone. And we will require only people's women, the SCs, the STs, the BCs, the women, and the children even, and the poor. Unless there's a massive movement, there is no hope for uh, our class. In fact, I remember what Swami Vivekananda said, I have no hope from this trial class, upper class. It refers to our class, though we were some of us made exceptions. I see hope rising from the huts of the peasant, the cobbler, and the sweeper. These three are Bakudras and Shurmanas. So that is where the hope lies. That is where you have to move. And I am sure that uh, they will also be able to make a signal contribution in building up this movement that we all have to contribute to it. But finally I must mention one thing. <coughs> Remembering Devu's <coughs> extraordinary achievements, you should not forget Devu the man. What moved him first? About his father, that he saw in the Bengal family <coughs> a woman dead and a child dying and yeah. later on dead. This was something which, which uh, stuck him. I think that was one of the primary influences in our life. Each of us may remember certain incidents like that. I mentioned about Devu the man. Also, when I met him first, and the wife was telling me, Shantaji, on our way, they were the man, they were the father, how even a secretary, he managed to find some time to go to the school of his child and bring the child home, and then return to work. So, it's not only, it's not only the achievements, the public operations, but also the human individual, which is one important thing about the Devu. Now, I join all of you, within the four things allotted to me, and I don't want to exceed it in wishing Devu many more years of <coughs> active work. The yoke is on your neck. It won't leave. So long as you are there, you have to be struggling. And I am sure that you enjoy that struggle also. I wish you many more years of uh, active life. And thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you, sir. I would like to join Mr. George Matthew in warmly complimenting my dear friend KB, Professor Manoranjan Mahanti, and uh, Mr. Sumit Chakravarti in having edited 20 essays uh, dedicated to the theme of land, equity, and democracy with rare professional acumen and insight. Uh, it has been a very neat, orderly, and flawless publication about which uh, anyone can be justly proud of. I am grateful to the three editors for having included a small piece written by me, Devuda Halij of Delanpur, then and now. This is a humble tribute uh, from my side to a very intensely humane person who is also intensely sensitive. Uh, this is what uh, Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore has described in one of his poems called Upohar in the anthology of poems Manusi. Nibhruter chitta maje nimise nimise baje jagater taranga aghat dhvanita hudayatai murta viram noy nidrahin saradin rat. So Devuda belongs to that category of very warm and intensely human and sensitive human beings who possesses a dhvanita hudaya, a heart which receives and which reverberates. He receives waves which are beneficial to mankind and reverberates them. <coughs> But he repulses those waves which are inimical to mankind with all the force at his command. And such a person does not remember what is the time for food and sleep and rest. So this is uh, what prompted me to write this piece. Uh, now this is one of the most uh, uncanny and unconventional, unorthodox ways of writing a piece. Devuda went incognito to this village Dalanpur in Raklam district, which was a hotbed of feudalism those days, stayed with the family of Punjab Hill and Bayro, and then has written this piece, which till date I rate as one of the most outstanding outpourings of a sensitive human heart. Now, what exactly has been brought out by this uh, is certainly not, uh, is not the time to repeat, because uh, 
the unorthodox and unconventional manner in which uh, he totally identified himself with their plight and predicament, with the anguish of the deprived, and the way he said what came out from them, ki jago tareti andhara mein jau, jago tareti andhara mein aao. I go in darkness, I return in darkness, my whole life is full of darkness. Is there a ray of light from your side? With that, uh, this uh, beautiful story ends. Uh, but the main point which uh, drove me to write this piece, that where are we today in relation to this insight, this sensitivity with which the piece was written? Last five and a half years of my work in the National Human Rights Commission drove me to this conclusion that uh, the order of priorities in which this program stood on 1st July 1975, when Mrs. Indira Gandhi announced to the nation the 20 point program, in which <coughs> this was one of the items, is nowhere to be seen today. We have uh, a steel frame which is totally insensitive to this. They disown the problem <coughs> that since there is a law, this seems to have been abolished lock, stock and barrel. All that was required to be done has been done and nothing more is required to be done. And acknowledging existence of the bonded labor system would only bring a slur on the government, on the image of the district administration and therefore the less said about it, the better. Innumerable complaints, almost 400 every day, and about a lack of complaints pour into the NHRC. These are all being sent to the district magistrates, perhaps <coughs> only to gather dust there. And at best, some of the district magistrates send them for inquiry to the lower echelons of the bureaucracy. They go and see to the landlords, with the owners, the employers. Maybe they have a nice time there, they record their statements. They don't have the time, energy, and resources to go to the aggrieved, the victimized, record their statements. <coughs> and the report that they mechanically submit to the district magistrate is also mechanically forwarded to the National Human Rights Commission, only to be filed here, or a repeat inquiry to be ordered. Now, this is the situation in which we are today, as far as this very important program, which was conceptualized by the Buddha, even before 25th of June, uh, even before 1st of July, 1975, when the 20 point program was announced to the nation. Now, that uncanny insight, that empathy and sensitivity with which he would have worked almost at a feverish speech between 1st July and 25th of October, when the then President of India, Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad, promulgated the ordinance, bonded labor system ordinance, cannot be equaled by anyone today. Bonded Labor System Abolition Act is one of the finest pieces of legislation that we have witnessed in post-independence India. A legislation which has KV very appropriately mentioned in his introductory remarks. The unique legislation where, despite separation of executive from the judiciary in Article 50 of the Constitution, summary powers have been given to the executive magistrates, vested with powers of a judicial magistrate. And this is a legislation which is totally ameliorative and totally relief oriented. You won't come across any other legislation, maybe interested migrant workmen's regulation of employment and conditions of service act, which the Buddha also authored as chairman of that compact committee in which I happen to be a member, could to some extent come somewhere near this, but this legislation is absolutely unmatched in terms of this empathy and sensitivity, that it is totally driven to wipe out the tear from the cheerless faces of uh, millions of uh, what Dr. <coughs> Rabindranath Tagore described as "Aisa mudamlana mukamukhe dite habe bhasa, Aisa usranta suska bhagna buke dhoniya tuli te habe asa, Mahavishu jivaneer tarange te nachi te nachi te nirbhay chuti te habe satya rekariya drugatara mrityu rekari na sanka." So unfortunately, we are in this situation today, where perhaps whatever was done the relentless efforts, the unremitting efforts with such dedication and commitment in the 70s have been thrown to the dustbin and uh, uh, utter disservice is being done to uh, the fact that legislation cannot bring about social change, legislation cannot uh, eradicate social evils and therefore nothing is required to be done. Uh, 
I would only like to conclude with a lot of anguish that uh, Devuda had uh, demonstrated a lot of optimism when he wrote this piece, and to quote him from that, Halij of Dalanpur, he writes only imaginative, sympathetic, and authentic implementation of law and various schemes for the uplift of the poor may help secure deliverance of the bonded. If, however, apathy and inaction were to continue, Punjab Hill, Behru, and his fellow Halis would have to wait till that day when history with its dry humor would settle the account with the landowners and set them free. I don't think that moment has arrived as yet. But uh, this uh, very statement is pregnant with meaning that uh, if we are constitutionally and legally mandated to do certain things in certain manner, in certain frame of time, and we don't live up to the expectations and aspirations of the people who have reposed that trust and confidence and mandate in us, perhaps that is the gravest disservice that we are doing to society and to all those unfortunate sections of humanity who are around us. And if we allow grievances to accumulate in this fashion, despite the fact that a grievance redress bill has been introduced in Parliament yesterday, grievances continue to accumulate. And if you allow grievances to accumulate in this fashion, they are bound to burst out one day. And when they burst out, perhaps no force on earth uh, can uh, stop that uh, opening of the Swiss gates uh, and this is exactly what uh, both T.S. Eliot in Westland and also Professor Uli Soinka had written. And I'm just concluding my statement with those two statements. In Westland, T.S. Eliot writes, we are the hollow men, we are the stuffed men, head pieces filled with straw. And Uli Soinka writes, if you do not rise against tyranny, injustice and oppression, you die within. It is much better that you die such a death instead of being merely biologically or clinically alive and putting up a facade that you are alive. Thank you very much. Uh, most uh, respectful Devuda and dignitaries in the hall, Devuta, I have looked upon Devuta, though much junior to him in service and also in age, as friend, philosopher, and guide. Many aspects of the personality of Devuta, many of his achievements we have discussed, and there is a lot more than what has been discussed. It's very, very difficult to explore a personality like the Buddha in a comprehensive manner. I would just like to touch one aspect that land issues in our policy of development, <coughs> in our policy of development, have been gradually getting sidelined. If one were to go through the second plan documents or the third plan documents, there was a lot of uh, euphoria regarding land reforms. And uh, people in those days were writing. P.C. Joshi was writing and other economists were writing. That in India, land issues, land reforms are the measures that will introduce an equitous society, will give effect to the preambles of the Constitution. And gradually we see the wearing away of land reforms. I think it was uh, Debuda was uh, the secretary then. When the last sincere effort was made to implement land reforms, and perhaps emergency took some very vigorous measures. And more land reforms was done during that period than what had been done in some of the earlier one decade. After that, land reforms had been overtaken by rural development. And the argument that has been put forward is as follows, that 
we have done whatever we could have done in land reforms and the frontiers of land reforms have been exhausted. There is no more land to be distributed. There is no more land, there is no tenancy left that you give tenancy rights. Therefore, <coughs> let us be done away with it and let us look at something which is more dynamic, like, say, rural development. I am an unworthy successor to a worthy Devuta because I occupied the same chair which he had occupied at one time and Sri Kevi Saxena's I have also. So I am very unworthy successor to these worthy persons. But this has overtaken and today I think in Devuda's days they expended the budget of the Ministry of Rural Development would have been two to three thousand crores, sir. Four thousand and twenty. And today I have a budget of seventy-six thousand crores. But the kind of satisfaction and the kind of heartbreaking one work which the Buddha did is with his 4,000 crores. I don't, I feel, and in all sincerity and humility, I tell you that I don't have that satisfaction with my 76,000 crores. The kind of institutional changes which he brought about and the kind of emphasis that he put on land issues. He was a person who has done perhaps more than any other to try to keep land reforms and land issues in the center of our polity. <coughs> and the last, and I admire the Buddha very much for one reason that he has, in a very determined manner, he has stuck to land reforms. And the last, that piece which he wrote and that work, seminal work, is on the issues, land issues in Bihar, sir. Your report, of course, uh, I don't think it was put, it, put, in the, put up in the assembly. Yeah. And uh, whenever uh, that report is to be, say, revived, or the government thinks of reviving that, the chair becomes very shaky, and there are a lot of reverberations. So what I think has been a very, very seminal work on the issues in Bihar, on land issues in Bihar has remained completely buried. <coughs> it is only that when myself, Dr. Hark and Saxena Saad, we are in that committee on unfinished agenda, we went through it meticulously and we have quoted it extensively. So, sir, that kind of admiration of fighting a lost battle, that is the hallmark of greatness, sir. And I bow before you. Another thing, because I am very conscious of the three minutes that have been allotted to me, it is written three minutes. So I am very conscious of the, those three minutes. And I would just like to say that apart from being a successor to you and our early successor to you, we also share the same driver. My, your driver, sir, is also driver to me. And he tells me about you that when you left the office, you kept a pair of walking shoes. And you put on the walking shoes and walked all the way home, sir. I think, sir, that is the correct information. <laughs> and, sir, that walking habit we have long given up, sir. Let me tell you, we do not walk. We try to fall. We try to take shortcuts. And, sir, only by walking, only by walking do you achieve what, sir, you have achieved. You have achieved much more than most of us are likely to achieve, sir. And I wish to God that it gives you a very long life and your perseverance with land issues persist. And I would like to quote two lines from a very forgotten poet, Ramdani Singh Dinkar, whom I avidly admire. He wrote a poem called Mashal. So it's a long poem. I would not like to quote but a prayer he makes at the end of those poems. And I repeat those lines, sir, that Buri Shirao mein naya rakt bahata rahe, anyay se ladane ki taakat maujood rahe. So both these things have happened. The young blood flowing in your veins, and you have done more to fight injustice, and you are doing more to fight injustice than any other, and may God grant the same wish to me. Thank you.
Now we are coming to the end of our function uh, with the release of the book and uh, allowing uh, the Buddha to exercise right of reply. Uh, but before that, uh, uh, I now would request Bogira to present a book of flowers. Flower to uh, George, who is the only surviving, surviving <laughs> panelist. Synonymous <laughs> 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 with Pachajira. Now we will release the book. And, uh, Bro, Charita, do you want to do it? Are you okay? Oh, open it. As long as you want. No, no. <laughs> I am accustomed now. Chairman always gives me.